So after a kind of disappointing latest entry to the James Bond franchise with Spectre, and Daniel Craig maybe coming back for one more, or maybe he's gonna slash his wrists, who knows? The future of where this series is going is a little unclear, I think it's safe to say. So today I thought I'd talk about the four James Bond films starring Daniel Craig. I'll get to the other ones in time. For now, let's talk about the most recent ones. And as usual, spoilers for all of these, there are time codes down below in the description so you can skip around as you please. Alright, let's get into it. So let's start off with my favorite Bond film, and one of my favorite action films of all time, Casino Royale. And I should preface all of this by saying, at the moment, I've only seen the Craig films, one Sean Connery one, and parts of a lot of the others. So I'm not exactly an expert on James Bond, but I feel like I know my way around this franchise somewhat well. Anyway, Casino Royale. What's good about this? Well, pretty much everything. This is such an awesome movie. Really, that's one of the best ways to describe it. It's just such a badass film in almost every way. The cast for one is great. People were really not happy about Daniel Craig being cast as Bond when that originally came out, but he is perfect for this more real-world take on the character. This Bond is different, because while he's still super cool and handsome and smooth with women, he's so much more brutal, and he's kind of a tank of a human being. Three of my favorite Daniel Craig Bond moments come in that parkour chase. One, where the guy he's chasing throws a gun at him, he catches it and just chucks it right back at his face. Two, when he takes this tremendous bone-crunching fall and just gets up and shakes it off with kind of a hurr. And three, when the guy is chasing, smoothly jumps through this tiny little hole in the wall, and Daniel Craig just goes right through it. That's a great introduction to how intense this version of the character is. The rest of the cast is really good as well. Eva Green is the best Bond girl, at least from the films I've seen. And I guess this was the whole point of her character, but unlike other Bond girls, she really feels like Bond's equal more or less. Unlike even a Bond girl, I guess, earlier in this very film. She's not just some sexy woman for Bond to seduce. She's smart, she can match him in his banter, and their romance is actually very believable. This movie really helps the other movies in this series a lot, because I bought the romance between Bond and Vesper so much that when she dies, I believe that Bond would be kind of emotionally broken for a while after this. If this wasn't a good romance, I'd be annoyed when they keep bringing it up in later films, but because it works so well, it adds to those. Mess Mingleson is also a great choice for a Bond villain. As usual, I'm excited to see a fellow part Dane doing a great job, and he plays this creepy, intimidating villain perfectly. Judy Dench is also good, but she shines more in the later films. This movie does a very good job of establishing the darker tone for this world and maintaining it throughout, but it's not some joyless film. It still has fun moments and scenes of levity that work and aren't forced throughout. The music is fantastic, especially that theme song by Chris Cornell, which is my favorite Bond theme. The movie is well paced and pretty well written, it's also really well directed, and the cinematography, while not the best of the Craig Bond films, is still really good. And really, with a Bond film like this, one of the biggest parts, easily, is the action. And it's, of course, fantastic here. There's so many awesome set pieces in this film. It's well choreographed, well filmed, well edited, just really well made and extremely entertaining action. The visual effects are also great, nothing ever looked fake, and there's no action scene that's just kind of meh. Everything here is super fun to watch. The movie also has such a cool ending, just want to put that out there. The name's Bond. James Bond. Also, I do want to say, this might be the most brutal PG-13 film I've ever seen. Like, I'm kind of surprised this wasn't R. I mean, there's that black and white opening that sets the tone for this way darker version of Bond perfectly, and then there's that torture scene where Bond gets naked, naked. and gets a little tap on the nuts. And that is easily one of the hardest to watch movie scenes for me. It's great for the movie though, since it fits this real world aesthetic very much. There are no elaborate lasers and countdowns and whatever, just getting your balls whipped for a solid five minutes. And it's very effective to the audience. On the list of things that I don't want to have happen to me, yeah, this is pretty close to the top. Also, despite being one of the more intense torture scenes I've seen, it still manages to be funny. As for what I didn't like here, really not a lot. Yes, the movie's very long, but it's really well paced for nearly all of it. It never gets boring. My only real complaint that I can point out here is more of a personal thing, so I don't really blame the film for it, but I'm sure I can't be the only one. The thing is, I don't really play cards a lot, or pretty much ever. I can do a little blackjack and go fish, that's more or less it. So I don't know how poker works, at all. So these long extended card playing scenes, while not boring, they're just not as tense as they could be, or I guess are for anyone who knows how to play. When there's an epic review of cards, I really don't know what's going on, although the occasional musical cue does help. But it's like, oh look, he has a king and an ace. That means nothing to me. But overall, Casino Royale is an amazing action ride. It was the perfect way to kind of update Bond for the modern era of action films, while still keeping a level of fun in there. I'll give it a 9.8 out of 10. So then we come to the somewhat divisive Quantum of Solace, which is a movie that, from what I've gathered, a few people love, 
quite a few people hate, and a lot of people think it's pretty meh. And I fall into that group. I think this movie's just fine. It's not truly horrendous, it's not great, there are some really cool things in it, and there are some really terrible things in it, which ultimately balances into a nice mix of kind of nothingness. As far as what's good, the cast is still great once again, especially Craig, he's one of the best parts of this. The main girl's pretty good, everyone who carries over from the last movie is good, and the new villain is okay, but he is certainly no Le Chiffre or Silva. There's some action that isn't that bad, and that's actually very entertaining. The music's pretty good, and the visual effects are pretty great all around. Really, for the positives, I can just say this is more or less a watchable film. Like, you can put this on, and the action's cool, and the acting's pretty good, and it's not like super boring or something like that. That's about it. Now, as far as what I didn't like, Really, this just kind of feels like a direct-to-DVD follow-up to Casino Royale, at least in terms of the story. It kind of just feels like a less good and long epilogue to that film. A lot of stuff here feels kind of like a pale imitation of Casino Royale, right down to the song. While some of the action is very cool, some of it is kind of horrible. There's some that's so shaky and so overcut that it gives you a headache. There are some cases where kind of shaky, fast edited action works really well, and this is not one of them. Just look at that opening car chase, for one example. Also, this movie was made during that big writer's strike, so the movie's plot is messy and convoluted and has a lot of dumb moments in it. And don't just take it from me. Daniel Craig said, quote, On Quantum, we were fucked. We had the bare bones of a script, and then there was a writer's strike, and there was nothing we could do. We couldn't employ a writer to finish it. I say to myself, never again but who knows. There was me trying to rewrite scenes, and a writer I am not. So in conclusion, I don't particularly like Quantum of Solace. Like I said, I see it more as an epilogue to Casino Royale than anything else, and it's not a great one. There are worse ways to spend an hour and a half, but this isn't anything very special. I'll give it a 6.7 out of 10. So then there's the kind of big epic revival of the Craig Bond films, Skyfall. I remember this was a huge event when it came out. Everyone was talking about it, everyone was loving it, and yeah, I'm in that camp. Skyfall is pretty fantastic. Firstly, what the other films did well, this also does well, cast, music, action, etc. The Bond and M dynamic is great in this. They also introduce Q into this world now, and he's a great addition. Ray Fiennes is always welcome in any film in my book. And the fish-faced man, Javier Bardem, is an amazing Bond villain. One of my favorite performances from him. This movie was directed by Sam Mendes, who did a great job with this. The visuals of this are phenomenal. It's just a really gorgeous movie. And the action sequences are excellent. Some of the best and coolest in any Bond film. While the movie is somewhat grounded in reality, it still has fun, creative, exciting action set pieces. And on that note, kind of like Casino Royale, the movie does have a bit of a dark tone, but that doesn't stop it from being a ton of fun to watch and having funny moments. The opening song and title sequence are iconic, and something that I like about this film is that it has fun with all those classic Bond tropes, but it still uses the best of them. Also, I feel like this was an interesting way to take Bond. I would call Skyfall the Dark Knight of the Bond films. Not because I think it's necessarily the best in the franchise, but because it has a similar feel to it. This big, kind of epic feeling, tense, well-made, personal story for a very iconic character. Really what I can say for this film is that it made this version of Bond feel fresh again, at least to me, after the disappointment of Quantum. Skyfall is not perfect though. The plot, while good, is flawed. A, it borrows a lot of plot points from different films, namely the previously mentioned Dark Knight, and B, there are a few plot holes. If you want to explore those more, the Screen Junkies and CinemaSins videos on the topic do a pretty good job, but short version, it's mainly around the villain's plan. There are some pretty big leaps in logic there. And also, yes, that ending does get a little bit Home Alone-ish, which I know a lot of people don't like, but personally, I still really enjoyed that part. All in all, as if it needs to be said, Skyfall is a great movie. It makes this Bond feel fresh again, with excellent performances, well done action, and a good pace. The plot isn't the best in the world, but it works for the most part. I'll give Skyfall a 9.2 out of 10. So now we've come to the latest Craig Bond film, Spectre, which is one of the more interesting ones in the series. And that's because when re-watching this, I realized there are so many great things in this film. Like awesome stuff that sometimes stacks up to the previous entries. The thing is though, all that potential is kind of squandered by the rest of the film. So let's talk about it. As far as what works, quite a bit. Some of the cast is really good, like Leia Seydoux and the guy who plays Q, they're great. Some of the others we'll get to later. The action here, for the most part, is amazing. The car chase is great, and that fight on the train is one of the best action scenes of all the Craig Bond films. The visual effects also can't be faulted. This has the largest practical movie explosion of all time, and yeah, it looks pretty cool. 
you can't miss it. And on that note, this was once again done by Sam Mendes, so for most of the film, the direction and cinematography are really good. The movie at least looks pretty fantastic. The music is as good as you'd expect at this point, there are a few funny moments that land, and I'd say the first half of this film is pretty awesome. It's not insanely good, but it's still really enjoyable. And then the movie just kind of keeps going along and gets progressively worse as it does. And I guess this is where I segue into the negatives. Firstly, tonally, the movie is kind of inconsistent. The other Craig films, especially Casino Royale, did a very good job of mixing this darker, more realistic Bond with some fun and sometimes even a bit silly moments. It never really felt out of place. Here though, they really tried to mesh this newer, darker world with the old James Bond, more cartoony stuff. And it just didn't work for me. Perfect example is when James Bond is falling in the opening and then he just lands perfectly on this couch. At that point in the film, I started to kind of understand what was going to happen here. The script also isn't great. Not only does a bit of the humor not work, but the overall structure of the film isn't that good. Mainly with this whole subplot with Ray Fiennes and Moriarty from Sherlock. That whole subplot is cliche and kind of boring. I like both of these actors, especially Ray Fiennes, but we've seen this kind of thing a million times before. Hell, one of them being in a movie that came out the same year as this one, and it just wasn't all that interesting. Let's talk about some of the cast members I didn't mention before. Firstly, Daniel Craig is James Bond. Again, as I've said probably three times in this video. I love him as this character, but in this film, sometimes he's great, and sometimes he really seems like he's phoning it in. You can kind of tell that he doesn't particularly enjoy doing these anymore, which is one of the reasons why I'm kind of skeptical about seeing him again. And then there's Christoph Waltz as the villain. Having recently watched Django Unchained and Inglorious Bastards, I can now appreciate why everyone's all saying Christoph Waltz is such a phenomenal actor, but in this, he's totally wasted. He isn't really given anything interesting or that memorable to do in terms of acting. I feel like this character really could have been played by anyone, and the big twist that he's the classic Bond villain Blofeld? Okay, maybe that's super mind-blowing for hardcore Bond fans, but one, I remember leading up to this film's release, everyone saw that coming a mile away, and two, what about people like me, who are more casual fans of the series? Like, I know who Blofeld is from pop culture, but this twist doesn't do anything for me really. The villain's motivation is also kinda weak, and the reveal that it was him who was behind all the other villains that Bond has taken out, I didn't really like that. It felt a bit forced, and kind of took away a bit from all the other Bond films. These villains that were so crazy intense, they were only ever actually pawns for this guy, who's just kind of whatever. Overall, just most of the stuff to do with the villain really didn't work for me. Also, the torture scene is so tame compared to Casino Royale. I didn't really feel much of anything in it. Some other things that aren't great here, the movie's too long, the song and title sequence I personally didn't really love, kind of felt like an attempt at another Skyfall. And again, the movie just gets worse as it goes along, especially in terms of plot holes. Like, the other movies have those, don't get me wrong. But this one, as it goes, stuff just makes no sense, or isn't at all explained. Like, why does Christoph Waltz keep sending things to kill Bond, even though he wants him alive? And that whole ending with all the pictures, that was kinda dumb. So all in all, Spectre is fine to good. It's okay. It's competent on most levels, but it's also just a bit bland. I like it more than Quantum, but it's far from Casino Royale and Skyfall. Upon a few more watches, the score has come down a bit for me, but I still don't think it's awful. There is some genuine great stuff in this film. That just also has to share some space with a lot of problems. I'll give Spectre a 7.3 out of 10. So those were my thoughts on the Daniel Craig Bond films. Which is your favorite? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson, and subscribe to more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.